In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, he who then the day of grace died in Christ and rose with the new life, we should now share with him eternal glory. Exactly, 
and talk on it. As we do so, we will remember the life of a woman who was loved and chosen by God even before she was formed in her mother's womb. Hazel Jennifer Brick, Jacob Briggs, was born according to family reports on September 24, 1951. But like many Trinidadians from that era, her official date of birth was recorded as one day later, September 25, 1951. She therefore bore the distinction of having the same recorded birth date as the first Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Sir Eric Augustus Williams. And just like him, she said goodbye to us in the month of March. For those of us in the family, Republic Day Nighton always will be Auntie Hazel's birthday, and she deserves the celebration. Please forgive me if I say Auntie Hazel throughout this eulogy because I cannot simply say Hazel. Manus is a very big thing in our family with our aunts and children from Dion <laughs> to Chloe had to respect her and know their place. She did not joke around with us. Auntie Hazel was the fifth child of ten children of Eloise and Peter Jacob. There were five boys and five girls. Auntie Claudia, Uncle Wilfred, Uncle Selwyn, Uncle Gregory, Auntie Hazel, Auntie Gwendolyn, Uncle Jeffrey, Auntie Pamela, Uncle Peter, and Auntie Martha. For everyone who belongs to a large family, you can immediately begin to imagine all the dynamics that would take place since Auntie Claudia married me. Uncle Wilfred was the Prime Minister, and Auntie Hazel was the next girl in line as the Deputy Prime Minister. All of us who grew up under her watch knew that she took the leadership role seriously, because if we got out of line, she would begin to ask, Where is the Speaker of the House? Or Mr. Toka, as I would know him. <laughs> Mr. Toka was a simple mistake that caused instant repentance and reverence. Eloise and Peter Jacob and their young family lived in Rancho Camargo and later moved to Santa Clara, where Auntie Hazel attended Santa Clara Government School. At school, she was the protector and keeper of her younger brothers and sisters, especially those who did not like to fight like Auntie Gwen. Anyone, big, small, tall or short, who seemed like a threat to her sisters was quickly dispatched with a proper meeting, and if they were not careful, they would be missing some clothes too. Even until her adulthood, Auntie Hazel respected everyone, but was afraid of no one. The fact was that God designed her to be a fighter, and a fearless fighter she was. She was born with a malformity in one leg and suffered severe epileptic seizures, so bad that Uncle Jeffrey recalled that the doctors told their parents that she would not survive her adulthood. Today, however, we stand in praise to Almighty God, who is the only one who determines when we leave this place. God granted us 17 and a half years of quality living. She had no patience with being a patient and made every effort to shorten her hospital visits, even by a sleep. She did not like the idea of lying around and wanted to be on the road. When I'm going home, too long in here, I want to go home, was all the nurses and doctors who came. As Remy and Desmond, her loving son in law, who she grew to love and appreciate deeply, one of their biggest challenges was to get her to school on her breast. She would say, They have me here like Queen Elizabeth. Auntie Hazel never used her challenges as an excuse for poor performance or laziness. She was not about excuses. In fact, she would always say to us, if you're doing something, do it good, or don't bother to do it at all. She was a stickler for cleanliness. She loved to see a home looking good, and would say yes, but well put away. Growing up, she would say to us, cleanliness is next to godliness, and poverty is no excuse for nastiness. So keep your house and your yard clean. And that she did. In the original family house on the main road, when my older cousins were children, they had to spread that polish on the floor and shine it until they could see the face of it. Saturday morning early, they had to get up and sweep the yard, no joking around. It was no surprise then that in her early adult life, 
She lived with the King and Company, run by Ms. Lepamuna, who served as the Tessera officers. And just as meticulous as she was at home, so she was on the job. If she cleaned her bathroom, it was an Amir and had the She taught us the importance of honesty and was considered so trustworthy by the Tessera or Patrick Henry Lewis, that she was often the one who cleaned the payroll offices. It was not a surprise that she, because of her determined nature, was able to become a small business contractor and secure her own contract to clean the, the company offices. So providing employment for others. But she never wanted it over that and continued to work just as hard alongside her as she did. As I said before, Auntie Hazel did not participate in her. She participated. She taught Auntie Gwenny and Uncle Jeffrey how to ride bike on the red road close to their Santa Clara home. And if you talk to her brothers and sisters, as well as one of her best friends growing up, Auntie Polina, who reportedly, according to uh, my older cousins and some of her brothers and sisters, when they were together, we called mm and mm. And I pray Mr. Parker still so ask Granny outside. <laughs> Auntie Glynis, Petrica, the Vargas ladies and others. Well, if you spoke with them, you would learn that Auntie Hazel never let her health keep her down. She was an avid sportswoman and played on the Tesla ladies' women's cricket team, helping to secure victories. They even traveled to Grenada for a game where she met the former Prime Minister of Grenada, Sir Eric Gary. She also played netball and hockey. Auntie Hazel loved to dance and enjoyed music. Along with Auntie Paulina and others, she was probably Joey Lewis's and his orchestra's biggest fan. We went to often be among the last to leave, helping to pack up the chairs. Believe it or not, Auntie Hazel was also in the classroom of Karen Bank. But for the details on that one, you'll have to talk to her friend school. Auntie Hazel was a sharp person. And whenever a gentleman complimented her on her look, she would respond, When I put up my sign, man wanted a tie with him, then they could have died. Well, there was one man who was very successful in his application, Milton Briggs. And after some skillful courtship, married Auntie Hazel on October 19, 1995. His support, quiet laughter, and quick wit was a perfect match for her. Together, each Christmas, they would give out awards for best bathroom, best living room, and so on in the family houses that they visited. She loved him faithfully and deeply until his passing in 2006. Auntie Hazel traveled to the U.S., Venezuela, and very Caribbean, very, sorry, various Caribbean countries, including Jamaica, Grenada, Barbados, and Guyana, spending time with family and friends. She made time to visit family, Uncle Francis and Auntie Georgie, and by Auntie Sylvia and Uncle Sharon was her favorite spot. She would walk into Jacob's settlement to make the rounds by her brothers and sisters. Auntie Gwenny's retirement also meant that she would be picked up and they would go wherever they would take them. Dion often called them the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Then there were the extended family lines and get togethers, just spending time with others. Auntie Hazel was the mother of two beautiful daughters, Granny and Olivia, who were the pride of her life. She would try to ensure that they were brought up well, loving God and respecting others. And value in family life. God blessed her with seven grandchildren. Shabon, Trabon, Tyra, Desiree, Tyra, Tia, and Tamara. And with that, her blessings overflow. She was very proud of each one of her grandchildren and firmly believed that each one had been specially blessed by God. And those of us who are much older than them realize that they benefited from the much softer side of Auntie Hazel's personality because they escaped Mr. Speaker and Mr. Talker. Well, for the most part, except for Shalom and Trouble. <laughs> because them got the drinks on Mr. Talker. The boys did not escape, but the girls got away. What was also interesting, though, was how she managed to spread that love to all the other young people in the family, so that for many of us, she became like a second mother. She was not afraid to correct us and protect us. Granny and Olivia would be able to give you all the stories of her showing up at their high school or on the taxi stand after school, unannounced, making sure everybody was walking a straight line, doing what they're supposed to be doing. No slipping school. 
She placed high value on education and pushed all of us to achieve the best of our ability. Auntie Hazel's house and veranda was a place of refuge to pour out whatever was on our hearts and to laugh out loud and enjoy life. There is a story of one of Uncle Jeffrey's children, which told daughter I will not say, who decided it was time to run far, far away from him. And so packed a large bag of clothes and ran away next door to Auntie Hazel's house. <laughs> of course, it all ended with a lot of laughter. But for those of us who have left, Auntie Hazel's house was always a place where you could come back at any time. Not just for advice, but for good food, juice, and some masterfully made sweet bread. We can still picture her and Auntie Sylvie sitting on the veranda, each with a cup of coffee, enjoying each other's company. Uncle Jeffrey pulling up from his house to the road. Liana, are you going you? And her responding, yes, joy of my heart. Everyone from Aunt Sharon, Uncle Peter, Uncle Selwyn, Aunt Carol, Auntie Gwenny, Uncle Gregory, Auntie Pamela, Auntie Marvel, and the list goes on. They find themselves sitting, chatting, or sometimes just looking out for Auntie Hazel with her daily routine of reading the newspaper cover to cover. That along with her good search and reading her Bible each morning was part of her routine. And good for them soon. They cannot succeed without God, she would say. Put God, sorry, God will put on his pajamas if he doesn't talk to God. At 5 o'clock every evening, everything was put aside so she could watch her favorite show beyond the TV with Marlon and Inspector Alexander. One Saturday, she had her bath and sat down comfortably in front of the television, only to be reminded that there was no movie on the tape that day. Great disappointment. So Marlon and Inspector Alexander have lost one of their biggest friends. She had a praying mother, Eloise who taught her how to pray and instill their love for God that only got brighter as the years went by. That is why today, though we sorrow, we do not sorrow like those without hope. We are confident that the one who gave her to us has taken her back to himself. He placed her on loan to us for 70 years, much more than the doctors predicted. She was able to see her grandchildren grow up. She was able to see her daughters get married. She was able to build love with her grandchildren and enjoy in the adulthood with her brothers and sisters. Life is not perfect. There are ups and downs. But it is worth living in well. And in her honor, we trust God and face life boldly, knowing that he who started a good work is able to see the completion. On behalf of the family, we thank all of you for coming out today to celebrate Auntie Hazel's life with us. There are so many more memories that can be shared. Important points to that time will not allow. These are memories that we will all carry with us and that we will share with each other whenever we meet and talk on us. Auntie Hazel was the epitome of a strong woman whose confidence was in God's goodness. She had pain and challenges but did not dwell in them. She brought joy and wisdom to those around her. We thank God for the everlasting gifts have been opened to her and she will meet with the others in our immediate family who are born before her. Grandpa Peter, Grandma Eloise, Mr. Graves, Uncle Wilfred, Auntie Claudia, Uncle Francis, Auntie Sophie, Kevin, and I, among other relatives. Most importantly, she will see the Lord Jesus himself. Rest in peace and peace and may perpetual life shine. Stand and spray. Oh God, whose name is always to forgive the should miss you. We have been calling you for your servant, Hazel Jennifer Jacob Graves, whom you have called to journey to. And since she hoped and believed in you, grant she may be led to her true home, to delight in its everlasting joys. Through all she describes some of her activity, in the the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Thank you, Mrs. Peace, and I will listen to the word of God.
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not imagine that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to complete. Complete them. I tell you solemnly, till heaven and earth disappear, not one dot, not one little stroke, shall disappear from the law until its purpose is achieved. Therefore the man infringes even one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. But the man who keeps them and teaches them will be considered great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. That gospel is the actual gospel of today, when it's in the third week of Lent. And two words come out of it. The words abolish and complete. I'm not too sure how we look at our lives, but quite often in some part of our lives we have to abolish certain things and we have to complete and fulfill other things. Obviously things that are not favorable to God, those are the areas that we are challenged together with those things, to abolish them. And things that are favorable to God, those areas will be a challenge as well, to fulfill, to complete them, and to bring them to fruition. So when it comes to our relationship with God, not because of this season of Lent, and not because of this funeral mass that we are celebrating, God challenges us to you know that when it comes to, and He offers us, fullness of life, He said to fulfill your life well, you have to observe what I'm giving you. You have to obey the commandments I lay before you. Because when you desire to abolish, you should not abolish those things. When you desire not to fulfill it, then you do not live the type of life I desire you to live. You live a troubled life. And you're not going to I'm going to reap all I have in store for you. Listening to the life of Hazel. You see that she actually got that distinction very well. That she knew what she should abolish and what needed to be completed and fulfilled. So if I compare and, 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 and quite a lot of that eulogy talks quite a lot about family and the way how family would get together and relate each other. So she recognized very early how family life was important. And from that particular core of a family life, other things would have evolved. So for even within her, her ability to be part of such a beautiful family, she is able to really, really understand what fullness of life would have meant to her. And fullness of life primarily means to us, sisters and brothers, you know, the more that I listen to the Word of God, and the more that I try to put the, the Word of God into practice, and live it, that is when I bring God's word and my life here to a little focus. So many of us will say, but you know, she lived three score ten. So it seems as if you know the life was cut short. Well, in our eyes, we may see that, but not in the eyes of God. Because remember, sisters and brothers, not because of the liturgy, we are put on a pilgrimage when we are placed here on this earth. So our pilgrimage has to come to an end sometime. And the effectiveness of this pilgrimage will definitely decide our end. So the effectiveness of this pilgrimage is going to tell us that we are making a preparation to live a much more complete and full life, fulfilled life of what God has in store for us. When I do the practice a little bit, you're going to hear some of the prayers that says that life is changed, not ended. And our order of physical existence on this earth may come to an end. The physical existence of Hazel would have come to an end on the 7th of March. But that was not the end of her story. That was just the beginning. You know, I always, I mean, let me say this before, when I do a funeral liturgy, you know, it's, I'm not discrediting the funeral program, but there's a tendency to sometimes write sunrise and sunset. 
and you have that sunrise and sunset. The seventh of March was not the sunset. The seventh of March was the new sunrise. Might have been a sunset for us. We are no longer physically going to be able to engage them. For us, there's a temporary sunset. There's a new sunrise for God. Because God saw the fidelity. And God saw the type of life that she was able to live. And that's why I suppose she had, what was it, Mr. Speaker? And the other instrument to use because she needed to abolish certain behaviors and attitudes to make sure that people could have fulfilled things in its proper way. So she had that within her. And I suppose the connection to God and making the God, her God the center of everything helped her that journey, especially in the challenges that she had to face, even physical. That's a very interesting and beautiful first reading from Lamentations. Because in that first reading, we hear of people who struggle with affliction, etc. But even going through affliction and pain and challenges, they never allow that to define them. Because what defined them was their hope in God. So they were able to abolish the limitations and their shortcomings. Their own illnesses, their own ways in which them, to other people might not have been able to function as anybody else. So they put those things away. But they were able to complete and fulfill love, hope, and having God as their foundation to take them through any affliction that they would encounter. And we heard about that in the life of Hazel lived as well. Even in her little kind of moments that she had to spend a little temporarily in the hospital. Because she was saying to herself, okay, I know that I've been afflicted in a certain way, but this is not, this is not going to define me. For me to stay here, this is not what I'm here. I need to get out and to move on and to do God's work. So we who are here celebrating her life need to take quite a number of pages from the volume this night. Because quite often what happens to us is that sometimes when we are facing challenges, trials, things not moving our way. You know, we get to re we resign so easily and quite often resign from God. Because we say to ourselves sometimes, we curse God. I say, I, I'm in this because of you. God is always a blesser. God is not curse. God blesses. And God desires and He waits an appointed time to give up an abundant blessing. The 7th of March was her window for her abundant blessing to leave this physical space and to go where God has destined for her. And that space that God has destined not only for her, but for us in the future at the same time. So, when it comes to us in our lives, and brothers, and celebrating this liturgy, we always have to have that at the forefront of our minds. And I always say to people, every, more, every day more that we live, is a less day for us to be here on this earth. It's not a boring thought, but it's reality. Because we are not put on this earth to set up any foundation. This is not the be all and end it all of our existence. We are pilgrims on this particular journey. And in that pilgrimage, you don't stay in that pilgrimage site forever. You move, and you move on to something else. And who do we move on to? Is the one who sustains us and the one who says, I will give you everything that is complete and a life that is full. All you have to do, obey me. Follow my commandments and listen well. That particular gospel added another part of it at the same time. And when Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish it, I come to fulfill it. And he said, the people who desire not to obey, to block me, and lead others down that wrong path, I will consider them, not my words, but the words of scripture, the least in the kingdom of heaven. But if people who desire to follow me, to follow my commandments, that are hope in me, faith in me, trust in me, in spite of their afflictions, their pain, their challenges, who sustain a relationship true and true, I will consider them great in the kingdom of heaven. We are looking here and saying farewell to greatness in the kingdom of heaven. Because she set the foundation right, she knew to trust and believe and to live up and have that same hope in this God who we desire to see sometime face to face and we pray that she will go up for that privilege very soon. So this is what we ponder upon our sisters and brothers and I say not because of the funeral liturgy and not just because of the season left. In every movement forward, we're seeing wonderful signs of you know, coming out of this, you know, the shackles of 
You know, I, I, some people will know that I call this thing a menace. Eh? And first time I've ever experienced a, forgive me, eh? or the history, a cage of a freedom. Anyway, praise God. You know, so when it comes to our system, brothers, I will. You know, so when it comes to us in our lives, God says to us, don't let this thing define you. This thing is passing. These kind of trials and difficulties that will come many times. Many times, you don't, you, you, you don't hope, you don't expect a storm that comes up. Unexpected. But once you have your foundation in me, once you have that trust and belief, once I sustain you, once you have that hope, in spite of what you will go through and have to go through, know that you are already set on a road that is destined towards you. And I believe in the life of Hazel, that is what she had at the forefront of her mind. And that is why she was able to live that life so well. And the patience that she was able to share with you, this is what was supposed to sustain you on that journey as well. We do not know the day, the time, or the hour, but we don't wait to make our preparations right today. Just like every day, Hazel was able to make this preparation as well. So we, in our own journey, in our fidelity, having hope, trusting and believing in the God of the resurrection, because as we believe in, believe in that when this body comes to an end, you know, we have a, this, uh, not this weekend, the weekend before, a little taste of the transfiguration. God has said to us, you know, once you observe my commandments, once you have faith in all of this earthly existence will pass away, I've already destined for you a glorious body, which will you be able to take up and take control of. And that's the symbolism of what God promises to us all. But in order to fulfill that promise right like Israel, we have to be able to obey, to submit, and to do whatever this God is asking of us. Because the moment that we decide to do things our own way, that is when things fall apart. But the more that we trust in God and do things God's way, that is when we see our life be fulfilled and live the true life God desires us all to live. He is the living. And God is challenging us to follow the perfect steps and do it today. If you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven, listen to the word of God. Submit to his commandments, his laws and regulations, and then someday we will meet his own and God face to face. Knowing that we did what is necessary, fulfilling our earthly existence that is temporary but sustaining an existence that God has destined for us forever in the future. That is why the place after is called eternity. There is no ending. It is forever. And a relationship with God will be forever for His name and for us in the future. Eternal rest down to the world, Lord, that the better I shine upon you. May she rest in peace. Amen. So we stand now, sisters and brothers, as we offer our prayers in this session. Our response is, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Glory to my Father, raised Christ the Son from the dead. The confidence we ask Him to save all His people living and dead. We pray for His. For the baptism is given the pleasure of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously. We pray for our sister who gave the body of Christ the bread of life, that she will be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for these relatives and friends, and for all who are helpless, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have fallen asleep and hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the family and friends of our sister Hazel, that they may be consoled and agreed by the Lord who have put the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Wherever you are, those who are streaming this division live and those who are present in this sacred space, this church, I just invite you just to bow our heads and say a silent prayer for this woman of faith for Hazel. Lord, hear us. We pray for all of us to stand up here to worship the faith that we will be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. 
God has shown them our strength. You listen to love the cry of your people. Hear the prayer you offer for the Father's sister, cleanser of our sins, and grant the fullness of redemption. To be all in special Christ our Lord. Amen. And it is his Jesus. We have our collection be taken up, followed by the preparation of this. Life is changed 
not ending. A witness will be going to the dust, and eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the name of the glory as without end we all are the king.
function we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As your will of blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I give you. My peace I give you. Do not on our sinful faith of the church and graciously grant their peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord, to which you all live. Let us of each other an expression of peace.
those who are from the dead. So let us commend our sister Jesus to the Lord, that the Lord may grace that in peace and raise up her body on the last day. Please stand. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hail the people prior to in their need and strengthen their hope in the last sinfulness. The may be spirit of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest come in the days of the Lord. May she rest in peace. May the soul of the soul of all people depart from the mercy of God. Rest in peace. May the peace of God which is beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of our God and of the Son of our Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God bless you all. In the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, when the angels lead into paradise, when the martyrs come to welcome you, and lead into the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem, when the choirs of the angels welcome you, and lead into the bosom of Abraham, where Lazarus is born no longer, okay, so, may you find eternal rest. My sisters and brothers, this funeral mass is ended, and so I go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God.
this morning. Somebody pass by. For the paraphonician. For the Holy Ghost. For the paraphonician. For the Holy Ghost. One by one. Door by door. Three by three. Jesus. Call them by the number. One by one. Two by two, three by three, Jesus, call them by the number, one by one, and I'm here, you're two by two, a little older, three by three, Jesus, call them by the number, one by one. Two by two, three by three, Jesus, call them by the number. I have a sword in my hand. Oi, yo, 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 help me to use it well. I have a sword in my hand. Oi, yo, 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 help me to use it well. I'm going to to watch and pray, never to come back in this way, judgment day. I have a God in my hand, why yo, 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 do you this well? I have a God in my hand, why yo, 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 yo. I'm going away to watch and pray, never to come back in this great judgment day. I have a God in my hand, oh, yo, 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 yo. This morning, somebody passed by. This morning, somebody passed by. For the Father, for the Son, for the Holy Ghost. For the Father, for the Son, for the Holy Ghost. This morning, somebody passed by. This morning, somebody passed by. For the Father, for the Son, for the Holy Ghost. For the Father, for the Son, for the Holy Ghost. Gonna lay down on the bed. Gonna lay down on the bed. Gonna lay down on the bed. I'm waiting for my Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lamb of God who died on Calvary. Gonna lay down on the bed. Gonna lay down on the bed. Gonna lay down on the bed. Waiting for my Lord. I'm waiting on. On the Lord, waiting on the Lord, I'm waiting on the Lamb of God who died on Calvary. Can I lay down on the bed? Can I lay down on the bed? Can I lay down on the bed? Waiting for my Lord, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lamb of God who died on Calvary. My God, roll your potato. My God, roll your potato. My God, what you waiting for? My God, roll your potato. God and the river is deep and wide. Milk and honey on the other side. My God, roll your potato. My God, what you waiting for? Jordan River is chilly and cold. It is my body but not my soul. My God, roll your potato. Hallelujah. My God, roll your potato. The river is deep, the river is wide. Milk and honey on the other side. The river is chilly, the river is cold. It is my body but 